Today we are going to talk about graphing rational functions. By the end of this video, you should be able to graph rational functions and find removable discontinuities. First, as a reminder, a rational function is a function of the form f of x equals p of x over q of x, where q of x does not equal zero. To graph a rational function, first you want to start by factoring and simplifying to check for removable discontinuities, also called a whole. This only occurs if something cancels. Next, you want to find the vertical asymptotes, which occur when the denominator equals zero. Then you need to find the horizontal or slant asymptotes, which depend on the degree. Your vertical asymptote should be of the form x equals a number. Your horizontal asymptote will be y equals a number, but a slant asymptote will be in the form y equals mx plus b. Next, you need to find the x-intercept, which you find by setting the numerator equal to zero. So you should have a number, zero. And lastly, you find the y-intercept, and you plug in zero for x. So let's look at a few examples. First, we have a of x equals 2x minus 1 over x. We need to double check and see, can we factor anything and simplify? No. So that tells us right away that we do not have a whole or removable discontinuity in this graph. The vertical asymptote occurs where the denominator is equal to zero. So that would be x equals zero. Then we need to find our horizontal or slant asymptote. We need to look at the degree. The degree of both the numerator and denominator are one. So we need to divide the leading coefficients, which is two and one. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2 divided by 1, or 2. To find the x-intercept, we set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. If you need to write that out, go ahead. But you get 1 half 0 as your x-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x. Since our denominator is just x, we end up dividing by 0, which means there is no y-intercept. If you can tell what the graph will look like by finding these pieces of information, go ahead and sketch it in. If you can't, you can go to your calculator and look at the graph in your calculator to get an idea of the general shape of your graph. So we can go ahead and sketch in our graph. If you want your graph to be more accurate, you can go to the table and look for some points that are integers, meaning they are not fractions or decimals. The point 1, 1 or negative 1, 3 might be helpful. So there's our graph. The domain is the set of all x's such that x does not equal the vertical asymptote, which is 0. And our range is the set of all y's 
such that y does not equal the horizontal asymptote, which is 2. Our end behavior as x approaches both positive and negative infinity, a of x approaches the horizontal asymptote, which is 2. If we want to write out our asymptotic behavior, we can say as x approaches the vertical asymptote of 0, from the right, a of x is approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches the vertical asymptote from the left, a of x approaches positive infinity. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have b of x equals x over x squared minus x minus 2. We want to start by factoring to see if we can simplify. Nothing cancels, so we do not have a whole. Our vertical asymptote comes from setting the denominator equal to 0. Here we have two vertical asymptotes. We have x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. To find the horizontal asymptote, we look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. Since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. For the x-intercept, we set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. So we just get 0, 0. Now weirdly, that point is on our horizontal asymptote, but we'll see what happens with that in a minute. To find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x, which will also give you 0, 0. Let's go to the calculator and see what this looks like. So, in between our two asymptotes, we have this almost cubic looking graph. If you want more accurate points, you can go to the table, see if there are any integer points, which it does not look like there are. So let's just sketch in our graph. So that's approximately what our graph looks like. Our domain is x such that x does not equal 2 or negative 1. Our range we need to be careful with. If you look at this middle part of the graph, that section has a range of all real numbers, which means Overall, our graph's range is all real numbers. So then our end behavior, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, b of x approaches the horizontal asymptote of 0. Next, we have c of x equals 2 times x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4. Let's factor.
none of these factors cancel out, so we have no whole. We do have two vertical asymptotes, x equals positive and negative 2. For our horizontal asymptote, the degree of both the numerator and denominator is 2, so we need to divide the leading coefficients. So we have 2 divided by 1, so our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Our x-intercept comes from setting the numerator equal to 0. Since it's already factored, we just need to take each of those factors and set it equal to 0. So we have that our x-intercepts are negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. Then our y-intercept, if you plug in 0 for x and simplify that, you get 0, 9 halves, or 4.5. So, we sort of have an idea of what our graph will look like, but let's go to the calculator. We already have a point on each of these sections of the curve, so we can just go ahead and sketch those in using our asymptotes as guidelines. And there we go. The domain is x such that x does not equal positive or negative 2, and our range is y such that y does not equal positive 2. Our end behavior is as x approaches positive and negative infinity, c of x approaches the horizontal asymptote of 2. Here we have d of x equals x squared minus 1 over x. We can go ahead and factor this. Nothing cancels, so we have no whole. Our vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. When we look at our horizontal or slant asymptote, we need to look at the degree. The degree of the numerator is 2, which is one more than the degree of the denominator. This means we have a slant asymptote. We can either do synthetic division or long division. I'm going to go ahead and do long division. Remember, when we do long division, we only look at the first term. So x squared divided by x is just x. Then we need to multiply x times x, which is x squared. And then subtract that from the line above. So we just end up with our quotient being x and our remainder being negative 1. This means that our slant asymptote is just y equals x. So if we graph that, that is this diagonal line across the graph. Our x-intercept comes from setting the numerator equal to 0.
so we need to set each of those factors equal to zero. So we get negative one, zero, and positive one, zero as our x-intercepts. The y-intercept happens when you plug in zero for x. Doing that will make us divide by zero, so there is no y-intercept. Now I'm going to go ahead and type this in the calculator. Now this is different than the other graphs we've looked at. I'm going to go back and I'm going to type in our slant asymptote, which is y equals x. So you can see that this diagonal line kind of guides the shape of the graph. So when we are graphing this, we need to get close to the vertical asymptote and close to the slant asymptote. And there we go. The domain is x such that x does not equal 0. The range is actually going to be all real numbers. If you look at just one branch of this, this in and of itself will have a range of all real numbers. Then our end behavior as x approaches positive and negative infinity, d of x approaches, well actually this one we can't write as one line. So if I go back and just look at what happens when we go toward negative infinity, which is the left side of the graph, we are headed down to negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, which is the right side of the graph, the graph is going up. So it approaches positive infinity. We have one last graph. Let's start by factoring this. You can use whatever method of factoring you want to factor the numerator. If you can just look at it like I did and figure it out, great. If you need to use factor by grouping or whatever other method you want to to factor, that is fine. If you look here, the x minus 2s will cancel out. Since we have something that cancels, this means we will have a whole. So, to find the whole, we need to look at the factor that canceled out. So we had x minus 2. If we set that equal to 0 and solve, we get x equals 2. So the x coordinate of the whole is going to be 2. Then we need to take 2 and plug it into this simplified function. So if I plug 2 in for x, I get 3 fourths. So that means at the point 2, 3 fourths, we have a whole or a removable discontinuity. We say it's removable because it doesn't end up creating an asymptote, it's just a single point in the graph that does not exist. For the rest of this problem, we are going to use the simplified fraction. So looking only at the simplified fraction, our vertical asymptote is where the denominator equals 0, which is x equals negative 2.
our horizontal or slant asymptote. We need to look at the degree. The numerator and denominator have the same degree, so we divide the leading coefficients, and our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Our x-intercept occurs when we set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. So we have 1 half, 0. Then our y-intercept occurs when we plug in 0 for x. So that gives us 0, negative 1 half. Now, we can go ahead and type this in the calculator to get a better idea of the shape of our graph. And I'm going to plug in the original function. If you want to look at the table, and try to find some integer points. We have 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, 7, which is not going to fit on our graph. Right. So we already have enough points on the right branch. We would have negative 3, 7, which is up here. So this branch is going to be kind of like that. So that's our graph. You need to be careful when you find the domain and range of functions when they have a whole. The domain is x such that x does not equal the vertical asymptote, which is negative 2 or the x value of the whole, which is positive 2. Same thing with the range. If y such that y does not equal the y coordinate of the whole or the horizontal asymptote. And lastly, our end behavior. As x approaches positive and negative infinity, E of x approaches the horizontal asymptote, which is 2.